Okay, so this is part two of uh, making the castle. So instead of going straight away to these uh, towers, like we said in part one, uh, let's first make this wall here. Uh, just to show you a quick way we are going to do it. Uh, so I guess we can duplicate, make an instance of this, Alt D. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't know if I should apply uh, these two here uh, because you can also, so if you want to make an, a copy of this, you need to also uh, duplicate uh, the curve itself because whenever you move the object without moving the curve, it will affect uh, the array as well. So you need to select everything, like you see, and then Alt D to make an instance, and uh, you can move it to the side like that. Now let's start working on the wall. So the wall should be easy as well. So we can just add, um, let's begin with the plane, 90 degrees. We only need to work to create one instance of this here, and then we can uh, duplicate uh, the other parts, the entire wall using uh, the array modifier and a curve modifier. So let's, Move this again. I guess I will use the array mod. Sorry, the mirror modifier. I don't think it's necessary, but uh, yeah, let's use the mirror modifier. But before we do that, let's apply the rotation and scale. Uh, maybe s uh, go to edit mode, select, go to edit mode, select these two vertices, pull them to around here to this to the level of this wall without the protrusions there. And uh, we can add a loop here, select these other vertices, delete them, add a mirror modifier. Now, uh, we also need to add a loop around here. Yeah, and uh, select these two, extrude in the Z axis like that, to have that. So if you look closely, uh, these are the s this wall design is the same as the wall design up here. Uh, the difference is that uh, this one is a bit shorter. So, but uh, if you look closely, there is a, there wall there there is a hole between these uh, standing pillars. So, <coughs> for those, <coughs> what we need to do, we can just uh, add a loop here. Now, we can. Uh, apply the mirror modifier, then select this face here, these two faces, insert, then scale in the X axis, because you can see it's a bit narrow, and uh, maybe move them the hole a bit down, then scale it like that, no, I think uh, about there, and now uh, we can delete uh, this inside face, like that, and uh, select, uh, before we apply the mirror modifier again, we can extrude now to have, do something like that. Now we need to add this top uh, design here, so we can select this face, these two faces, hit E to extrude, and then scale them like that, then extrude again to around there, extrude, scale, we scale in the Y as well, extrude to around there, then insert, then move up, insert, extrude, insert, extrude, scale, something like that. So again, you can come up with your own design. As long as it looks good, you should be good. So I can also add a, a rounded curve here, instead of making that sharp. And uh, if you want, you can add a loop here, Control B to bevel it. Make sure it's only two rings. Then extrude again, then extrude inside something like that.
Uh, if you want to be fancy, you can also just select this edge, move it up so that we have that kind of design or control B to bevel that to make it rounded off like that. And uh, another thing, because, because you see the edge is a bit too sharp, you can also add a bevel around uh, those. Uh, but uh, because we're going to have a lot of duplicates, this tends to slow down uh, the workspace a bit. So unless your computer can handle it, uh, I wouldn't recommend using it. Uh, but uh, yeah, so, how, so we have our wall. We can now add, make sure you have the object selected. You can now add the array. Yes, and then we are going to use the curve. We're going to use the curve object. A curve object. Let me first scale this to around there. We're going to use the curve object. Maybe let me set the origin to center. We're going to be using the curve object uh, to. Let me see to set uh, the, uh, the count here instead of fixing it uh, directly here. So we need to design uh, the walls. Let me first, let me rotate this 90 degrees in the X 90 degrees, negative 90 degrees so that we can see what we are doing. So I will add a curve. hit V and change uh, the handle type to vector. So this is going to be our wall design. Let me first hide this. So grab this around here. So right now you can uh, apply the rotation and scale for the curve and also make sure you have applied the rotation and scale of this uh, wall. Now we can also move the 3D cursor to the wall, cursor to selected, and also move uh, the curve to the selection. Uh, I think it's going the wrong direction, so I can rotate this 90 degrees, no, 180 degrees, and also apply the rotation and scale. Now we can up, we can come in, and uh, instead of the fit fit type of the array, we can change this to fit length. No, not fit length, but uh, fit curve, and select this as the curve. You see what we have. Now every time you extrude this, you see the length of the curve will increase, uh, which will also increase the count of uh, the wall. Uh, but uh, the problem is that uh, it's not following our curve. So for that, we need to add a curve deformer uh, when you're doing this, make sure that uh, uh, the object and the curve are in the same position. Otherwise, you're going to have uh, problems aligning this uh, to the curve or matching it to the uh, curve. And also make sure to have uh, the rotation and scale of these two objects uh, s applied. Otherwise, you're going to have issues uh, figuring out the rotation and uh, positioning. So let's select this curve. I don't know why we are having that issue. So let's see. Apply. Let's try moving this. So it seems it's following the curve, but uh, we are getting some scaling issues. Let's try Z. So I guess we just need to scale this down. And scale this up. And let's reposition this. Uh, 
I think this issue is here is, is coming uh, as a result of us using uh, vector uh, transformation. But uh, yeah, look, so let's first get the shape right uh, of these walls and then start dealing with these scaling issues. So let's uh, see how this looks. I can also turn off uh, the grid for now. So this comes and then curves here. So about one, two, three blocks. So around there, I guess we can also move this in the Z direction, in the X direction. So around there, this should curve. So we can first straighten these up. Like this and uh, move this. Oh, we can just add, subdivide this and uh, add, uh, change this handle type to aligned. Move it like this, then scale it a bit and then select these two and scale them as well, like so. So you see we getting that and uh, this needs to be uh, we can delete first delete this uh, this needs to be straightened like that Let's see if we, uh, because there is this distortion here uh, that I don't like. Uh, let's see what happens if I subdivide this and then bring this closer here. You can see it reduces the distortion. So I guess it should also reduce the distortion if we add, subdivide this. Uh, I guess we can change this to automatic and move it closer. Uh, maybe change it to aligned and uh, so that we have a proper curve here. Yeah, I think that's good enough. If you're worried, if you don't like that, uh, you can always apply the array and the curve and then edit that manually. But uh, I want to maintain uh, the work that workflow so that I can easily change uh, the curve to what I want. Yeah, so we have that. Uh, we just need to follow this. So I think at around here, uh, this curves off like this, maybe one or two uh, blocks, then we go back. It expands to that around there. We need to extrude this. So whenever you see that distortion there, you can just always add a few curves, a few subdivisions and uh, to re reduce uh, that distortion. So we also need this for this here, subdivide, and then we need to subdivide these two as well. See now those are straight. So to straighten these, you just need to subdivide. So if we move this closer, you see they are straightened. And now we also need to move this closer to get our straight ones as well. Or maybe if before you, whenever you're extruding, first extrude something small, 
closer to the last ca corner and then extrude again and then you will that way you can get straight uh, blocks right away so we need to extrude until we are at the center of this around here so that then we can just duplicate the other side so for that I just need to select these two out the control A to mirror that in, in the opposite direction and you can see we have that so there is some bit of intersection here so I just need Oh, I see, I see, I see. And because I'm, I'm, the curve is also an instance, but I, I just need to move uh, these like this. Then, just move this wall closer to that, like that. Remember when we when you're moving these you need to also move the curve as well. So let's align our camera a bit. So Yeah, we have that. So if you want to make this a bit taller, you can just select all of these. then we just need to select this bottom you know what we'll do that later i think the walls are tall enough oh let's just uh, select the bottom vertices then extrude them down i think that's too much still too much I'm not sure why uh, in object mode they are taller than they are in the uh, in edit mode but uh, that's a minor issue we can look at that later yes yeah, so we have nice tall walls uh, in the next part we will look at how to make this entrance and uh, yeah thank you